if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all the commandments that I've commanded you today, the Lord your God will set you high above the nations of the earth, and all of these blessings will come upon you and they'll overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord. And then it says, Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall the fruit of your womb be, and the fruit of the ground, and the fruit of the cattle, and the increase of your herds, and your young, and your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in and when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven. The Lord will command the blessings on you in your barns and in all that you undertake. And he will bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as people holy to himself, as he has sworn to you, if you will keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they'll be afraid of you. And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity, in the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your livestock, the fruit of your ground, within the land that the Lord your God has sworn to the fathers to give you. And the Lord will open to you his good treasury, the heavens to give you the rain in your land in the seasons and to bless all of the work of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, but you will not borrow. And the Lord will make you head and not the tail. And you shall only go up and not go down. If you obey the commands of the Lord your God, which I command you today, being careful to do them. And if you do not turn aside from any of the words that I've commanded you today to the right or the left, to go after the gods, to serve them. But if you will not obey obey the voice of the Lord your God and be careful to do all the commandments and his statutes that I command you today, then all of these curses will fall upon you and overtake you. And then he tells them that all of those blessings will turn to curses. And he lists them all. He says, instead of being blessed in the city, you'll be cursed in the city. Instead of your kneading bowls being blessed, they will be cursed. Instead of you being protected from your enemies, you will not be protected from your enemies, and so on and so on. So you can read the rest of that. It's a very long passage in Deuteronomy uh, 28, and we've actually gone over it in previous lessons in detail. But this is what they did. And they did this as they went into the promised land so that they would know, now that you're in this place, if you will obey God and you will do all the things that he asks you to do, you will be blessed here. But if you do not, if you do any of these things that I ask you not to do, then you will be cursed here. They needed to know this right off so that they could start out right, just as we need to start our year off right. We need to think if we follow the Lord, then we will be blessed. Now, that doesn't mean that we have all of these specific blessings and curses that the people of Israel had at this exact time. This was specific to them, but it does mean that we will be blessed if we follow the Lord. Our lives will be at peace. We will always have him. Even if everything around us is going badly, we may not always have wonderful blessings on this earth, but we will always have the Lord our God if we are following him. And if we don't follow him, then we do have the consequences of those actions here on this earth. And they're not good. Following our own way, doing our own thing, we are not living a blessed life. These difficulties will be brought on by our own actions. Not because we live in a sinful world. Not because naturally things, bad things happen. But because we are bringing those bad things on ourselves because we're not following God. Because we all know there are natural consequences to our actions. And so we want to start this year taking God's word seriously. Do what they did in this passage. Put all of your past sins behind you and move forward living for God with a new slate, trusting him, and patiently obeying him, doing what he says, even if you don't want to, even if 
you don't understand, wait and trust that he has your best interest at heart. Follow him totally and completely just as Joshua did. Do you notice how completely Joshua followed? He did this battle exactly like God told him. He made the altar at the exact place God told him. He put the words on the altar exactly like God told him. He built the altar exactly like God told him. He praised him. He thanked him. And then he pronounced these blessings and curses exactly as God told him to do. Take God's word seriously. It's important. Listen to what he says and follow it. He gives us these rules for our good. Proverbs 16.20 says, he who heeds the word wisely will find good. And what whoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. And then Proverbs twenty five twenty eight says, He who has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. We're vulnerable if we don't have any rule over our own spirit. Without self-control, we are vulnerable to all the temptations. When we aren't able to discipline ourselves and guard ourselves, then we're vulnerable to all the things. So don't be like a man without walls. Patience and self-control are a continuous exercise, but they do yield rewards. We just have to persevere. I'm going to end with these two verses. Psalm 19, 7 through 11 says, the law of the Lord is perfect. It converts the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. It makes wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right. They rejoice the heart. His commandments are pure. They enlighten the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. In keeping God's laws, in patiently obeying, in having self-control is great re- reward because his words warn us. James 1.12 says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Endure temptation, resist, and you will receive the crown of life. We have God and we can start this new year fresh and new, the new slate without fear, without dismay, without guilt or shame, confident at peace, striving towards the goal of pleasing our Lord and Savior, living for the one who died for us. Let's commit to that goal this year.